So, I mean, I would say that's accurate. It is, it's a rapidly evolving uh, field and our infection prevention team is in contact uh, and receiving guidance both from the state health department uh, as well as from the CDC as how we're gonna continue uh, to move forward um, with our plans to deal with an Ebola patient and the remote chance that we actually have one show up here at Erlanger. So there's all sorts of concerns uh, out there. Certainly we're updating uh, the administration of the hospital. We're receiving updates from the health department and from the CDC. So it is a very uh, kind of fluid uh, moving target, if you will. But with all that being said, I think the, the, the overarching message is there's a remote chance that we would actually encounter a patient at Erlanger, but if we were to encounter such a patient, we will be prepared. I mean, I think certainly it's, uh, it's possible, um, but, uh, you know, most of the traffic that's coming from West Africa now is actually coming through five major airports where they're uh, doing some screening of returning uh, travelers, but certainly with that being said, someone could be missed, someone could develop symptoms after uh, they were uh, arrived in the country, and certainly if they end up in Chattanooga, uh, we could see them. But uh, again, uh, if you look across this epidemic so far, you know, we've, we've seen very few cases in the United States, so I think just the chances overall would be very, very low that we would end up seeing someone here. With that being said, if somebody does show up, this is obviously a very serious infection and we need to, uh, to be prepared to take care of it. Uh, so the most important thing uh, for anybody on the front lines, uh, if you have an individual presenting with a febrile illness uh, that resembles uh, the flu, um, the travel history is paramount. Um, and so certainly if somebody's uh, had a travel history to West Africa in the last 21 days, or certainly been a contact to someone who has uh, uh, Ebola, uh, then those would be your primary uh, risk factors. At that point, we would then I immediately isolate that patient. Uh, we have a protocol in place uh, at Erlanger and, uh, as to how we would deal with that patient, where that patient uh, would go, um, what the personal protective equipment uh, would, would be used, um, and who would be taking care of that patient. So we have all of those uh, plans uh, in place and uh, that's how we would deal with that. Obviously if we had a case at Erlanger I would be notified. We would obviously notify the health department uh, and then move forward from there. I think you know I think as a healthcare worker myself there needs to be appropriate you know, appropriate concern, but there doesn't, there certainly doesn't need to be panic. And um, I think that's why we're committed here at Erlanger to making sure uh, that, we, that we've identified the folks who are gonna work with an Ebola patient and go through uh, training and drills as to how to put on and take off the protective equipment uh, so that they're not potentially exposed. I don't think we're missing the boat on how you can get it at this point. I think we just has to, have to be extra careful uh, and how we're handling, uh, handling an, an Ebola patient. Well, I mean, it, as the general public, the way to avoid uh, Ebola is obviously to av avoid Ebola patients and avoid travel to West Africa right now. So certainly I wouldn't advise anybody to travel to West Africa. And I don't think really many people are considering uh, doing that. Um, but if you were to come into contact with somebody with Ebola, it's, it's avoiding body fluids, and that's really the, the basic principles. And it's somewhat reassuring that, the, you know, the, that nobody in the gentleman's family in, in Texas has actually gotten sick. It's been the two healthcare workers uh, that, have, uh, that have gotten sick. So I think we would be seeing a much larger epidemic if this were anything other than body fluids. So I still don't think we have to worry about the airborne route uh, at this point. So you know, Ebola is, um, is like many other viral illnesses and pre presents with nonspecific symptoms such as fevers, body aches, uh, nausea, vomiting. The one distinguishing factor from, uh, for Ebola from influenza is the fact that people can develop bleeding, uh, which you typically don't see with uh, influenza. But 
Again, if you were to present to our, our emergency department with those sorts of symptoms, you would be immediately screened uh, for risk factors for Ebola, and if those risk factors were identified, you'd be placed in isolation. Uh, well, certainly we know that there is a response team in Dallas uh, right now that's, uh, you know, that, that was already there prior to the identification of the second uh, healthcare worker. And, um, you know, I think that in dealing with this epidemic, depending on how widespread it gets, I think we want to develop uh, centers that are specialized in caring for patients like these. And if it becomes more widespread, uh, you know, that might be uh, the you know the way to go response teams or you know funneling patients into to uh, facilities uh, like Emory that already have uh, you know the appropriate level of biosafety built into their infrastructure. So the the uh, the tri when a patient presents to triage, the triage nurse is responsible for identifying a febrile patient and then moving forward with asking the screening questions. If those screening questions were to come back positive, a patient would be placed uh, in, in isolation in the emergency department. Um, at that point, the house supervisor, the infection pre uh, prevention team, the director of the emergency department, as well as myself, would be notified. Um, we would activate our Ebola team, uh, involve the personnel who have been specifically trained to deal uh, with the infection. Uh, then that patient would be moved uh, to the identified area of the hospital where we're going to care uh, for uh, Ebola patients. There would be limited contact uh, to who took care of that patient. Bas basically, we would like to limit the contact to those who have specifically been trained uh, to uh, deal with these patients. Um, obviously, the personal protective equipment is uh, key. Uh, that would include, uh, at a minimum, gowns, gloves, masks, uh, and eye protection. Again, trying to prevent any body fluids from coming into contact with either mucous membranes or non-intact skin. So um, in preparation uh, for an Ebola patient, we'd like, we, we have involved an emergency room physicians, critical care physicians, ID physicians, uh, and a nephrologist. So um, uh, we're currently, obviously if we were to, be, if we were to be dealt with an unusual circumstance, such as a pediatric patient or a pregnant woman, we would also have to involve those specialists as well.